Hey guys, Matt here with another new Vinyl Finds video. Uh, I was on a drought there for a few weeks or a couple months, however long it was, and, uh, and now I'm bombarding your subscription feed with one video after the other, so sorry about that, but I do have a lot to show. I want to get my new arrivals bin cleared out, if you want to call it that. Um, and this stack here, this is actually a stack of freebies. Um, I had a guy that does a radio show before my friend Sam and I do our psychedelic radio show on Thursday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. on 89.5 WJMU The Quad. <laughs> um, and if you want, you can like us on Facebook, check us out there, visit our WordPress page uh, where you can listen to all of our past shows, leave comments, feedback, it's totally up to you, no pressure, uh, but the links are below if you want to check that out. Uh, but no, Tom, a guy that does a blues show called Very Big Blues Before Us, um, a guy that, uh, I'd say probably in his late 50s, early 60s, uh, had a bunch of records that he gave to us, uh, the same night he brought him in a trash bag <laughs> one night. Uh, he'd had his basement flooded and found his, you know, box of records down there and just kind of said, I don't know what the condition's going to be on these. Some of these might be kind of rough guys, but, you know, I haven't listened to them in years. You guys will like them a lot more than I will. You know, go for it. So, uh, we dug through it and found some great stuff. My friend Sam, uh, is a big Pink Floyd fan. Led Zeppelin is his favorite band and Pink Floyd is number two. And he found a copy of Piper at the Gates of Dawn that was in beautiful shape. So I was really happy that he found that and, and gladly gave that to him. But this is my stack. got eight records here. And again, they were all free from Tom. So Tom, I know you're not watching, but if you are, thank you. I appreciate it. First up, Early Steppenwolf. Uh, this one was able to avoid any kind of water damage. Uh, I had some stuff on it that I was able to clean up. Um, Steppenwolf is one of those groups, kind of like Iron Butterfly, that I'm not a big fan of uh, necessarily. Some of their stuff is hit and miss for me. But I do like some of the tracks quite a bit, and uh, I know this was released after Seven Wolf got famous, of course, Born to Be Wild. They were previously known as the Sparrows, and this is recorded from a concert in San Francisco in 1967 when they were still under that name. And the first five tracks, all inside one, are kind of a typical Steppenwolf kind of sound, that hard blues rock, um, you know, early 70s hard rock kind of a sound, a little bit of psych leanings on them. You know, pretty typical, but enjoyable stuff. And then side two is a 21 minute take of the pusher that gets uh, that goes just from super avant-garde weird psychedelic to you know morphing into the pusher. You know each band member kind of slowly starts picking up. You know the keyboards will play for a little bit, the drummer will come in with the guitarist. Fantastic! This album is worth picking up just for side two's the pusher. Um, it's on YouTube. It's 21 minutes long. I know it's a long track listen to it. It's worth it. It will blow your mind that this was Steppenwolf. This is uh, Ginger Baker's Air Force with their second album. Uh, Ginger Baker, of course, from Cream, the drummer. I knew he had his own group called Ginger Baker's Air Force, but had never had anything by them, had never listened to it. And uh, so Solace was like, oh, that looks cool. And again, another one that uh, avoided any kind of water damage. This was fantastic. I really enjoyed this. There's some progressive leanings on it. Uh, there's some jazz leanings on it. There's some psych leanings on it. It covers a whole gamut of stuff. Um, there's one track, and the name of it is uh, something, like mine, something like Let Me Ride, something like that, that uh, is sort of a gospel soul, funked out song that is really, really good. I, that was my favorite track on this album. Uh, really, really happy to have this. I got a couple albums by Free. Uh, this is Highway. I, I admittedly don't know much about Free other than their big hit, All Right Now. Um, listen to this. It's, it's not bad. It's kind of that standard classic rock, uh, kind of an R&B. Uh, rock sound, um, enjoyable, nothing that blew me away though, so um, I'll probably hang on to them and give them another listen, but right off the bat, and I know some of you guys are big free uh, free fans, and you know, it's great, but it just didn't hit with me like I thought it would, so, but it, it wasn't a bad listen, it's not like a, ew, throw it away, this is terrible, so just kind of what I considered standard fare. And this is Fire and Water by Free, featuring the hit all right now. Uh, this one I liked a little bit better than Highway. Uh, this had a little bit harder sound on it. Um, again, still didn't blow me away or anything, but wasn't bad. Um, so this will stick around the collection, at least for another listener or two. Then we have some Blue Cheer. This is Outside Inside. I'm a big Blue Cheer fan. have their uh, Vince Abyss Eruptum album with Summertime Blues. And I have uh, Oh Pleasant Hope, uh, I believe their last album. And I uh, was able to add this to the collection. Again, didn't get any water damage, super clean. And uh, was really, really a good listen. Uh, each Blue Cheer album is a little bit different than the other. They, they get a little bit more experimental with stuff. Uh, they're not afraid to try out things like uh, some country influence songs. Um, you know, that really hard psych sound that you know from Summer Blues, almost a heavy metal kind of stuff. 
and uh, this one was uh, was a, another gem in their in their uh, catalog. Really good stuff. And another Blue Cheer album. This is new and improved. Probably my favorite Blue Cheer album that I've listened to so far. Uh, this one did unfortunately suffer some water damage along the bottom. That would not clean up. That is a little little stain there, but. It's free. You can't complain about that, right? Um, no, this is fantastic. Randy Holden plays guitar on this album. The only album he appeared on, um, I believe he was in CAC previously and uh, went solo a little bit later with an album called Population 2, I believe. Fantastic guitar player, and he adds some really, really nice, cool psychedelic guitar on a lot of these tracks. Um, if you get a Blue Cheer album, Vincent Bissereptum is up there, but uh, this, this should follow it very closely. It would improve Blue Cheer well, well worth the money you would spend on this. And Iron Butterfly's debut album, Heavy. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not a huge Iron Butterfly fan. Uh, they can be kind of hit and miss for me, but I really like this album. In Agata De Vida, you know, has the hit on it, and that's kind of a cool track, uh, despite the ridiculously overlong drum solo on that song. But no, this was this is my favorite Iron Butterfly album that I've listened to, consistent from start to finish. Uh, ends with Iron Butterfly theme. Uh, it's probably my favorite track in Iron Butterfly's catalog now. So, um, you know, cool album to have, and this is, can be found fairly cheap uh, usually. So, if you see it, this is an, an Iron Butterfly that I would recommend picking up. And my best find from Tom's uh, Tom's Little Hall was uh, this album here. This is the Smoke, self-titled. It did suffer some water damage. This is actually supposed to be this color here on this picture, but you can see a little bit of a, a water stain along there, and it's more prominent on the back. But this is a psych pop masterpiece. Uh, I don't say that very often, but this is up there for me with uh, like Pet Sounds or Ogden's Nut or uh, Village Green, The Millennium's Begin. This would be up there with those albums for me. Um, excuse me. Michael Lloyd, who was later with uh, the West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band, this was his studio project. Um, I cannot think of the other two guys that played with him on this. I cannot remember, but I know Kim Fowley had a pretty big hand in helping with production on this. Um, uh, it's just really, really good. He claims that uh, there were no drugs involved in this. Michael Lloyd was kind of squeaky clean. Um, but uh, as Endless Trip says, if, if there was no drugs involved, this is the best Contact High album ever made. And it really is. It's super, super good. Uh, seek this out. It's on YouTube. There's not a lot of plays from it. I feel like this is kind of an overlooked uh, album definitely check this out, The Smoke. And that does it for Tom's little haul here. I always say there's nothing better than records, except for free records, so um, I don't always say that. I don't know why I said I always say that, but it's not like a catchphrase. But anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. See ya.